बहुमान ने मावेली करा लोकसभा अंगम श्री कोडी कुन्नील सुरेश अभिवंदीय डॉक्टर गैब्रिल मार ग्रिगोरियस मेट्रोपॉलिटन श्रीमती प्रिया जैकब श्री अभय एलेक्जेंडर श्री सुनील पी ओमेन श्री पी वर्के फादर बीजू टी मैथ्यूज प्रिय अध्यापक रे विद्यार्थी विद्यार्थी निकले प्रिय सहोदरी सहोदरन मारे एलावर कोमेंडे वंदनम चिंगनूर पुत्तन काव मेट्रोपॉलिटन हायर सेकेंडरी स्कूल इंडे प्लाटिनम जुबली आघोषम उद्घाटनम चैया नतीया संतोषम उंड आद्या माई ई इसकू रिले पठिता कड़कुम अध्यापक अर्कुम अनध्यापक अर्कुम मैनेजमेंट सारथी कलकुम पूर्व विद्यार्थी कलकुम प्लैटिनम जुबली आशम सकल पुत्तन काविल एंडे आद्या संदर्शनम आन एंगुलिम महाकवि पुत्तन काव मतान तरकन एन्ना पैरी लूडे ई ग्रामम प्रशस्तम आन इविडे वरानु एल्ला वरेयुम कानानु साधी चतिल चरितार थेयम उंड What I found unique about the origin of this school was that it developed from a small library set up at St. Mary's Orthodox Cathedral by Mar Divanesios Metropolitan in 1797. पेपर पेपर दे दीजिए पेपर वो जो यही दिस वन जस्ट दिस टुडे एस वी इनोग्रेट दी स्कूल्स प्लेटिनम जुबली वी आर रिमाइंडेड ऑफ दी फोर साइट ऑफ हिज ग्रेस गिव अर गीज मार फ्लॉक्सी नोस who founded this institution on 1st July 1948, popularly known as Putin Kavil Kochut Rumeni, the saintly bishop of Malankara Orthodox Syrian Church, was acknowledged as an able administrator and a very powerful communicator. I am informed that Kochu Tirumeni, who was a visionary, had headed and established many educational institutions during his short but blessed life of 54 years. The Catholicate High School and the Catholicate College of Patnam Titta are a few of the institutions that he had shaped. I am grateful to Sri Jacob Matthew of Malayalam Manorma, who had brought to my notice that this school was celebrating its platinum jubilee. His profound respect for Kochu Tirumani and genuine interest 
in the welfare of the school were clear indications of the great reputation enjoyed by this institution in this part of Kerala. I am informed that some of the students of the first batch of this school, most of them in their late 80s, are sitting in the audience. A recent newspaper report cited one of those students, Shri P. D. Kyle Mathai Varghese, recalling that his name in the student's register was entered by Kochu Tirumeni himself. Children, Children leaving a school for admission to higher classes is usual. However, the Metropolitan School has the distinction of the first batch of students who once left returning to the school when the government sanctioned higher classes here. These students came back due to their affection and respect for Kochu Tirumeni, who always lovingly reminded them that education was the best route to prosperous and purposeful life. On this happy occasion, our thoughts also go to the management leaders, teachers, and staff who have served this institution during the last 75 years. The contribution of the students and the alumni, they also deserve a special mention. The institution is an alma mater to thousands of people in Shanganur and surrounding areas, and it has gifted several luminaries, eminent personalities to the society. I understand that late Metropolitan Thomas Mar Athansius of Shanganur, Chief Justice J. Benjamin Koshi of Patna High Court, Metropolitan Guy Varghese Mar Pelixe Nos of Chennai, and the present Inspector General of Border Security Force, Shri P. V. Ippan, are few of those illustrious alumni. In fact, one of the greatest contribution of Christianity to Kerala and India in general has been the impetus it provided to the spread of quality education. There are many sects, but, and they may differ in many practices and rituals, but the dedication they have shown towards setting up and managing educational institutions has been admiringly noteworthy. We are aware of how early missionaries like Benjamin Bailey played a key role in, in standardizing Malayalam language, making learning easier for all classes of people. The dedication and foresight of saintly figures like Saint Kuriakos Elias Chavra in opening schools to all classes of people and insisting on every church having a school attached to it have contributed to the, greatly contributed to the educational status which Kerala today enjoys in the country. What such stalwarts followed, must have followed the biblical view of considering a good education as the greatest wealth. 
take hold of instruction do not let go guard her for she is your life the platinum jubilee is undoubtedly a landmark in the history of any institution at the same time this occasion indicates the direction in which the future has to be steered since we are now in an era driven by knowledge and expertise every school has to ponder on how education could serve to carve a better future for our children who are desk who are today described as the amrit generation of india if it is this generation which would which would lead the country when india celebrates the centenary of its independence in 2047 the nation which is in now in amrit yatra we have the azadi ka amrit mahotsav is over now we are in the amrit kal which means next 25 years of sincere and dedicated endeavor to realize the dreams of our our constitutional fathers our freedom fighters known and unknown and ensure that india mark progresses to prosperity and a an honored place in the comity of nations the aim of education i was very fascinated by his holiness basilios martoma matthews raising very relevant very relevant issues and that should make us ponder about that what is the basic aim and purpose of the education we have in india the indian tradition we has envisioned that education must endow us with purity of body purity of mind clarity of speech and sanctity above all sanctity of spirit the education must make us fair minded and remove the diseases of mind the what are the diseases of mind the prejudices the biases which we inherit and that is why education has been described as tad dittiye janma that is the second birth second birth to be born again the education is that which does not merely give us information but makes our life in harmony with all existence for this our educational efforts should ensure the full development of human personality and citizenship qualities this aspect has been outlined in our new educational policy all of us know that the this policy promotes holistic learning and critical thinking envisages schools as centers that impart the skills required to succeed it has a futuristic vision and uh, takes a view that the education which is imparted makes us fully prepared to meet the challenges of the future this effort calls for empowering teachers with innovative methodologies integration of modern technology 
and clear emphasis on inclusion if we are to develop a truly inclusive educational system that cares for children with special needs, we have to focus on inclusive infrastructure, curriculum adaptations, and the creation of a sensitive learning environment. The school is where one acquires both the knowledge required for daily life as well as the art of living. The art of right living does not mean success in material terms, but it means enriching oneself with the radiance of humanism. The highest education is that which does not merely give us information, but makes our life in harmony with all that exists. A humanistic, value-based education that ensures high quality has been emphasized in our national education policy. To conclude, let me say that education is a search for truth. Remember, remember the golden words of Lord Jesus Christ who said, seek and you shall find. Thus, when we seek knowledge, we are seeking God. A Sufi poet, Jalaluddin Rumi, once said, in each human spirit is a Christ concealed to be helped or hindered, to be hurt or healed. If from any human soul you lift the veil, you will find a Christ hidden without fail. This lifting of the, of the veil in search of the hidden Christ in every human being is what education is all about. And I hope that Metropolitan Higher Secondary School will continue to inspire its students to seek higher knowledge and higher truths in the years to come. My best wishes to all the students, teachers, parents, and former students of this great institution. Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu, val